What's up guys and welcome. Today I want to show you some crucial tips for the artifact material rate that will help you progress in it. Um, being it stage 16 or stage 1, these tips can help everywhere. I also want to give you some avenues on how you can actually build around not having enough fighters for the raid and try to go for a different approach and also some team comps and good units that you can use that you may not know of. Alright, so I turn off the um, power of dominance and I want to show you guys uh, basically how, how it works, right? So, you want a few fighters, if possible the Wrath is good, you want the Defender and the Healer. That's pretty much always the case unless you're super late game and you have insane stats. But so, and a cost generator. So, I always go for a cost generator, there's multiple ones. And then you have this cost generator and here's a trick that you can use. This is more for the later stages, um, this trick, but I want to show you guys it anyways. <coughs> so here, you want to wait until his first foot steps on the first tile right there. So right now you place him and you see she attacks, he's attacking and take a look at Wrath. He's attacking as well. Let's take a look at Komodo. This way you can just stack up to five units basically that will attack um, Zalazar in the end. So This is a short trick I wanted to show you guys at the beginning. Now this trick only helps you if you have enough fighters to actually place around a Zalazar that will survive his ultimate ability, right? But what if you don't have enough uh, fighters to, to play around his ultimate ability? What if your fighters just get nuked and one shot from Zalazar? Then it doesn't matter, place your um, defender as early as possible so they can stack their ultimate already before he even arrives. Always use a cost generator. <coughs> and if you don't have <coughs> the the fighters to tank the, his ultimate, you just place a tank up here, right? you place a tank up here and if you have a fighter here you need at least one, right? So you place your fighter down here and your tank won't be able to deal with these uh, spawns that are coming all the time, but if you uh, your main DPS will. So your tank will just be there and your main DPS preferably uh, AOE mage will take care of these spawns. This way you can surround Solasar even without having that many fighters, right? And then, no other thing that you can use is actually two tiled fighters if you don't have enough fighters to to um, actually survive Solasar's ultimate, two tiled fighters can actually attack. So, Chankwar here. Now Chankwar is a one tile fighter as you may know, but the thing about Chankwar is in his ultimate form he gets an extended range so he will be able to hit Salazar plus when these Voidlings come in he will hit Salazar and the Voidlings because in his ultimate he does AOE damage and he can actually um, do some work there. Also, um, yeah, that's uh, the strat if you don't have enough fighters. Then there's another strat I want to show you, third strat, <coughs> and that is defeat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You change your main DPS. You you change your main DPS. So Wrath has high base stats, right? Wrath has high base stats. So he's probably the fighter who will at least you have him, and he will survive um, Salazar's ultimate. But you change, you take your main DPS out, and Put in Cuke and give your best gear, you know, from your main DPS, give that stuff to your fighter that is able to survive. And then your fighter will deal a lot more damage. <coughs> your fighter will deal a lot more damage. But the thing is, uh, you won't lose out that much damage overall from your mage or main DPS. If you if you if it's a mage, you won't lose out that much damage. Cause Cuke's damage scales ridiculously well, especially against. Wait, let me put this in. 
uh, especially against the later stages of Salazar being stronger because he does percentage damage and he will always focus Salazar he will never focus the voidlings or whatever they are I call them voidlings so he will not get distracted from them which is quite um, useful then you can use Komodo I really like Komodo uh, if you get good enough stats for him definitely use him because of his bleed his bleed is so good because his bleed increases your team's your fighters damage output by a large margin and <coughs> not only that but um, <coughs> he, he deals a lot of damage with it as well so that's a strat that you can also use use Kuke and now overall I want to go a bit over fighters and uh, all other units that you can use so first of all we had the quick summary from what we learned so far the placement tip at the beginning of uh, so a Salazar walking in if you already are late game use this tip and place all your fighters around Salazar this way the next tip is that uh, if you don't have enough fighters you and you have an AOE mage as your main DPS or just you know, whatever your main DPS is if you you place a tank next to Salazar and you let your main DPS take care of that side as well <coughs> if you don't have enough fighters cause Salazar's ult deals a lot of damage right another strat and the third strat that we uh, talked about was with the cuke a bit of a cheese and now I want to go over generally good units for this we already went over it a bit um, first let's go over the tanks <coughs> So Azor is good because he's Nightmare. Nightmare faction overall is really good because they usually have higher base stats. <coughs> overall Baron is really good. Isolde is really good. I just fused her so I can't showcase you how she works. <coughs> Another niche pick would be actually Mariel because Mariel is able to heal her allies. So it relieves a lot of pressure from your healer to actually um, do that but of course she's not that tanky that's a bit of my problem so I wouldn't recommend her as the one who tanks uh, Salazar but Isolde could be really good cause she can shield your um, fighters so your fighters might be able to survive with her right and let's go actually to gallery it's a lot easier <coughs> Other than that, I want to actually put some spotlight onto Livian. You can fuse her. She is quite tanky. She can do a lot of work tanking Salazar as well. I wouldn't recommend uh, Aveline. I don't think she's that good in this because she barely does damage and she's not as tanky as some other uh, units, nor does she provide that much utility. Baron, is, of course, he's top, top tier for this because he's so tanky. And here's, here's an interesting one. That, that's a really interesting one. I might build him actually. And that is Titus. Yes, you heard it right. Titus, the F tier unit that everyone is hating on. But I think he actually has. A, he might have a place here. Because um, if you take a look at it, there will be in the later stages um, play spots that you need to defend that you can't place a healer on. And that's where Titus comes in. Because he can't get healed anyways, but you need to take a look at his stats. Um, he has stats of a 5 star unit like he has 4k, H, uh, 4K attack that's insane <coughs> he has insane stats and he's really self sufficient plus he deals quite a lot of damage in his state the only problem is his high cost but I believe Titus actually has a place here and because uh, if you take a look at the artifact raid Can I see the map here? Up here, there will be uh, a slime spawning, right? And someone has to get rid of these slimes. And if you don't have an insane unit that can take them down, Titus will be it. Because he can self heal himself, he can deal a lot of damage in his ultimate form. Like he has the potential. Question is just is his old cooldown too high or not? That's a bit my worry. And his high cost, but I believe cause is self-sufficient and has these insane stats. Um, 
you could make use of it. I will try it. I will try it. Um, I will try to build them myself. Now, other defenders. Oleg, of course, everyone knows him. He's cracked. <coughs> um, and the legendary defenders, basically. Um, but here's the main part: the fighters, right? Here I want to show you guys a few things. So all these fighters are good, right? Um, <coughs> Komodo. Once again, just use Komodo. Just use him. He is so good because of his bleed application. Consistent bleed for 35 seconds. 1% max HP damage. That's just so insanely good. And his damage is actually quite strong. His damage is actually quite strong against the target. Wrath, of course. And then some lesser known uh, fighters. I want to put some spotlight on as well. I already touched on him as well. Chankwar can actually be used because he has a two tile attack range in his ultimate form and does AoE damage. So when these voidlings, I just call them voidlings, um, come in. He will still keep on attacking Salazar with his ultimate active. And just um, his AoE will hit these Voidlings by his side. And this way he won't lose any DPS to Salazar. So that's quite something that you could consider. <coughs> Scorch multi, multi range uh, attacker as well. If you don't have the fighters to tank uh, through, of course, we all know Deimos is good. Then Moroth is actually also quite good. <coughs> He's uh, quite underrated, but I think there's better options. Same goes for Ayn, of course. He um, can be made use of because he's double ranged, and on top of that, he will buff the fighter in front of him uh, with his talent. As you can see, it will give them defense uh, shred and damage increase. So that's something you can consider with Ayn. Um, and also use him. Alright guys, uh, that's basically it. I was waffling a bit so I cut, <laughs> cut out the rest. Um, use Komodo if you have him. He's underrated as hell and um, Isolde is good to shield your fighters and if you don't have the fighters you can go with the tank approach, second tank approach like I showed you or you can go with um, two tile fighters to help you out and dealing damage to Salazars. These are the strats make sure with the placement as well that you get everything right and i hope you learned something and i hope you can continue in the artifact trade i'm out peace